Being in this community for as long as I have, I've heard many different fans refer to the Golden Age of Halo. The idea of when the Golden Age took place exactly is subjective, but if we're going by sheer numbers, interactions, and the hype, I would have to say that this took place at the apex of Halo's popularity. This was somewhere in between the years of 2004 to mid-2011. The term itself wasn't coined to be another way of saying that some games were superior to others, rather it was an acknowledgement and celebration of everything that both the games and players accomplished during that time. Halo has an incredible community, it's one of the most most creative communities that I've ever seen, in fact. Players from all over the world come together, they make things, whether it's with or about Halo, they get themselves involved in amazing ways. Whether they were digital artists, video editors, writers, designers, hardcore gamers, aspiring developers, toy enthusiasts, anything, they all came together under the Halo community banner. Now I think that most would agree with me when I say that Halo has hit a bit of a slump in the last few years. I mean, sure enough, it's stable but it clearly hasn't reached the heights that it once did. But honestly, I'm thinking with recent developments and how the gaming scene has evolved over the last decade that Halo really has the potential to get a huge resurgence and interest and hype, and I would like to talk about why. <laughs> Some may disagree with me here, but it is my strong opinion that if Halo wants to get some serious attention in the coming weeks and kickstart 2020, 343 need to utilize and merge their current biggest hype piece with something just as important. And since the current hype piece is the re-release of Halo Reach on both Xbox and PC, obviously a multiplayer game, then what better way to utilize and maximize that hype than to partner up with several highly influential people streaming the game on or shortly before December the 3rd. They're called influencers for a reason. This is not new. This is something that every publisher knows. Let them do their jobs. Let them potentially influence their audiences of hundreds of thousands to bring players both old and new and welcome them to Reach and by extension Halo. Getting a stream set up these days is crazy easy in comparison to what it was like years ago. And it's made even easier thanks to things like Streamlabs and OBS as well as platforms like Twitch, Mixer and yeah, those two. The boost that could be given by well-known streamers and their audiences trying to join in on the fun could be a good jolt to the series. And let's say you're not even a well-known streamer, you'd still be contributing to the boost just by being another active channel in the roster. Whether you've got 5 followers or 500,000 followers, streaming the game is going to help. And that's not to say that simply launching the game won't have this effect, uh, they're, they're definitely going to get a lot of people, there's, there's been a lot of people already buying this game on Steam, but all I'm saying is that any kind of boost is going to help out, and any kind of boost that's given from large communities and streamers cannot hurt unless the servers die as a result of those people trying to play with that. Yeah. Gee, I hope the servers don't die. Your nobility has blinded you as ever. How about newer streamers taking on Halo as their, you know, new main game? I'm sure 343 would definitely appreciate some brand new Halo grassroots members, you know what I'm saying? And with more people streaming Halo, playing Halo, discovering or rediscovering the things that they love, fingers crossed that we should start seeing blood be pumped into those niche parts of Halo that are still going strong. The speedrunners, the machinima creators, those funny moments people, all of that stuff could get a nice boost as Halo moves forward and looks to the future. But it doesn't stop there. What about more content from new faces? I'm seeing mod showcases for things like patches, graphical updates, model swapping. If I want to play Halo goddamn Reach as a goddamn grunt, then that is my goddamn right. But thinking beyond Reach and everything that it could potentially do for Halo. Because after Reach, we still have five more titles to go with Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST, and Halo 4. And let's assume, let's assume, for one moment that the rest of these games, on top of being ported to PC, also get some quality of life tune-ups like armor customization where applicable, various patches and additions to their respective sandboxes. With both of these updates releasing simultaneously for both Xbox and PC, I really believe that this would be going above and beyond of what was originally expected of the Master Chief Collection, and anybody interested in Halo should definitely consider viewing the MCC in a different light. But it's not all about the MCC. 
Those releases are bound to create significant hype as we move throughout 2020. The Halo Insider flights are evidence of that, and plenty of people have been streaming, giving feedback, and talking to 343 about what works and what needs fine-tuning. And let's not forget that Reach isn't the only game that we will be flighting as time goes on. Soon enough, we'll be trying out the remaining games, and, as 343 have stated, the latest game in the Halo series will also be part of the flight system. Halo Infinite. Obviously, I'm still cautious about what to expect from this game, but with everything happening to the MCC, that caution is cooling off just a bit to allow myself some hype at the possibilities. To ensure success, the game absolutely needs to be knockout at launch, so no missing pieces of content like Forge and staple game types like Big Team or Infection, even if this means delaying the game by a little. But even before release, 343 have made it a very clear thing that Halo Infinite will have opt-in flights to help out with development. And just as a PSA, if you have not signed up to the Halo Insider flights, I want you to go and do that right now, because not only is it fun, it's also helpful. So please do it if you got the time. There will be a link in the description. Along with those flights, there will be hype, there will be streams, there will be videos. 2020 is going to be an insane year for Halo due to the sheer amount of content. Since Halo 5 finished with the updates, it's been really tough to feel anything for Halo, and I'm sure some of my friends and indeed some of you could agree that it felt like a really tough drip feed for a while, especially prior to the Reach flights and the MCC relaunch. So let's just hope that this whole thing is going to be worth it. You're unfit for nipples! That was dumb. Not smart. So this is going to be different, but a constant fear that I've had ever since I started with these commentary videos was that I was going to be called a shill or any number of insults for having the opinions that I do. And there have been a few people, I'm not going to lie, there have been a few. But overall, you've been really, really lovely to me, and I'm grateful for it. Normally I try to end my videos with a silly joke or a sarcastic jab or something else like that, but not today. Today I just wanted to thank you for being nice. That's about it. Other than this comment, and the answer to that is uh, next video. I will be bringing back Dave Reed's next video, so if you have something you want me to read and respond to, post your comment with hashtag Dave Reed, and I will pick your comment, maybe. Thank you very much for watching, praise Matanui, and have a nice day.